Good morning, everyone in Morwell. It's good to be back with you again after some time. I'm recording this on the 19th of July, and um, uh, I know that um, Max and Jill and uh, a couple of others are in Africa <clears throat> at this time. And uh, so it's been exciting to hear about that. And um, Max sent me a report of their uh, what they where they will be going and what dates where they will be and I know that the Terrelgan team will be going over shortly as well so that's really exciting. Um, I've just recovered from a second bout of COVID and uh, so I've got through that and um, on Saturday just gone we had the graduation service in India of one of our training schools so that was good to see we were able to join with that over Zoom. So um, it's good to see things happening and what God is doing in the nations. And uh, so I've just been asked to share uh, again from um, what we've been speaking about in the past about the authority of Christ. And so um, I'd like to share some thoughts and some scripture with you uh, in regard to the authority of Christ and how that outworks in ministry um, through a sp specific people that he have, has gifted and chosen and given to gifts in the local church and uh, how that is reproduced in others as well for the ongoing generations. And so um, the scripture that I'd like to uh start with this morning is from Ephesians chapter 4 uh, verse 8 to 11 we're looking at that section and of course uh, this would be a very well-known portion of scripture and it says here and he himself gave some to be apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and some teachers and so this scripture so shows us uh, that the authority that God has placed in ministry amongst his people. And the first thing that I see in this scripture is that these ministry gifts belong to Christ. They do not belong to us or to the people whom they are given. And we see the words he himself gave. And so we are simply stewards of everything that is given to us by God. And, uh, of course, the scripture says that it is um, a steward must be found faithful. And so God's people who are given these gifts are stewards of his gifts and graces. And a scripture in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God, each one of you should use whatever gift he has received to serve one another. And the second thing I see in this scripture, Ephesians chapter 4, um, <clears throat> verse 11, the sum he gave, he himself gave some. And of course, that is talking about people. And so men and women. So the people themselves, men and women, are gifts from God to the church. They are chosen and gifted to serve God's people. So these gifts are not about titles or positions, which seem so prevalent in many ministries today, title and position and privilege one of our pastors in Papua New Guinea, I'll never forget, he used to say there's title ministry, but there's also Tao ministry. Uh, uh, on the thinking about Jesus, how he took up a towel and washed the feet of his disciples, and he said, that's what I am. I'm Tao ministry, not title ministry. And I that had a, a deep impression on me, and I never forgot that that uh, we are here to serve and and that's what the reason that these gifts are given to serve the body of Christ and um, 
also we look at the attitude of Paul and the other apostles in the way that they would uh, begin many of their letters that they wrote in the New Testament. Um, Romans chapter 1, verse 1, Philippians, Titus, Philemon, uh, James, you know, these men would start, Paul, a servant of Christ, uh, servants of Christ and or slaves of Christ. And and uh, Paul, writing to Philemon, said he was a prisoner, but not just a prisoner, he was a prisoner of Christ. And that attitude that whatever circumstance they were in, um, they saw themselves as God's servants. And whatever was happening, whatever the condition, political, um, religious, persecution that was happening, whatever the uh, outside conditions were, they continued to serve as much as they could in that capacity, in the gifts that God had given them to the body of Christ. And the third thing I see that these ministry roles outwork and manifest the authority of Christ over the devil and all the works of the devil. So they are given to build the church of Christ and to prepare and equip people in the church. And the next thing we can see is that Christ won these gifts for us, for you and me. He won them at the cross. Ephesians 4, 8 says, this is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. And I like how it uh, relates that scripture in God's word, the translation, God's word. It says, that's why the scriptures say, when he went to the highest place, he took captives, those who had captured us, and gave gifts to people. What a wonderful thing. And it says here, it's quoting the scriptures. That's why the scriptures say, well, what scripture is that? It's quoting from Psalm chapter 68, verse 18. Um, and it's the picture of a warrior king who is returning from battle with the enemy that he has defeated and uh, he has a train of them. They're in chains and utterly defeated. And he comes back with the spoils of war and he hands those out to his people. In the New Testament, again, the book of Colossians tells us that Jesus disarmed powers and authorities. He triumphed over them at the cross. I like that word disarmed when in relation to the devil and his works he has been legally disarmed by christ at the cross and uh and so the work that jesus did on calvary for you and for me for every believer jesus does not keep that victory and the the rewards of that victory to himself he shares it he gives them out he distributes them to those whom these ministry gifts are given according to his will. And uh, we share in the victory of Christ. The word tells us that very clearly. And so in every local church among the born again body of Christ, Jesus has called and qualified men and women for gospel ministry in the world. They have Jesus delegated authority over all the enemies of mankind, the devil, demons, and all of their evil works. What a wonderful thing, that right, that inheritance that you and I have, that authority that every believer has. Um, but here we are, are still looking at these specific gifts that um, Christ uh, bestows upon certain people in local churches all over the world to minister to the body of Christ. And um, again, we look back at the scripture that we um, 
uh, maybe we had touched on this previously, but Jesus reading from the scroll of Isaiah in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, back in his hometown, he opens up the scroll and he quotes from Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favour has come. And so this is what Jesus had come to do. And this is what he also calls you and I to do. We have this same authority to carry out this same ministry. And uh, the devil hates this ministry of authority. In Revelation chapter 2, in Revelation chapter 12, verse 12, it says that it tells us that the devil is very angry because he knows that his time is short. So as we have already seen in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, that Jesus has delegated authority to every believer. Jesus said, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And that is automatically bestowed upon every person uh, at the new birth when they are born again. And do we know that? Do we um, have we been taught that? Do we understand that authority that we all have? And it's so important that every believer know the authority that they have over the devil. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. We have a new identity and we walk and live in that new identity. Uh, we are seated in heavenly places and we've been given the rightful uh, privilege of being able to speak and act on Christ's behalf, to execute his authority in the world today. And not only in our own lives, but also to be able to minister to others if we go on to read in ephesians chapter 4 verse 12 it says their responsibility coming back to people with the specific ministries prophets evangelists apostles pastors and teachers it says their responsibility is to equip god's people to do his work and to build up the church the body of christ and so the role of these people, as I have just said, that they are there to serve God's people. And so in all of our local churches, there surely must be people who are gifted with these ministries. We can see that uh, outworking to some degree um, in their lives. Uh, where there is this natural outworking of these ministries and knowing how to be able to identify that and encourage that and to build up the church. It's not to um, not to have uh, authority over people. No, it, it is a ministry of authority, but it is for the purpose of building up uh, God's people, building up the church and for the equipping of the body of Christ so that others can also go out and serve God in their various gift and callings. And so how are believers equipped? Well, this is where training comes in. And every believer, as I've just said, has been given the same authority. And so it is the responsibility of those who possess ministry gifts is to train and to reproduce those gifts in the lives of others. And that's why training is such an important thing. In my um, 17 years, uh, part of my time in Papua New Guinea, I was there for 22 years, and 17 years of that was involved in ministry training, both in Papua New Guinea at Bethel Centre and also in other nations. And um 
my first nine years in Papua New Guinea, I was involved in hospitality and uh, we had so many pastors and teams come from Australia and other nations to to minister at Bethel. And I loved doing that. I, I loved serving and looking after people. But um, And then uh, Pastor Barry asked if I would like to, after I had four years here, I went back to Papua New Guinea and continued serving. Um, and that's when I got involved in training and I was uh, looking after the World Missions Faith Training School. We have uh, three full-time training programs. We had the Bible College, the Frontier Evangelism, and the World Missions Faith Training School. So I was in charge of that school, and um, and I grew to really love that. I I didn't realize how much I loved teaching and enjoyed teaching, and didn't sort of think that I had a gift in that area. And it wasn't until I was given the opportunity and I was terrified at first, um, but came to love researching subjects and really understanding the word, but the rewards of seeing young people come with their own desire to be trained and to go back to their villages, to know how to better promote world missions in their village churches, to pray for the nations, to give to the nations and and for us to have the opportunity to train Papua New Guineans who, who have a desire to go and be missionaries. And to this day, we continue to work uh, with Bethel in sending Papua New Guineans to the nations. And um, we've recently sent two more out and so it's such a wonderful thing and our training programs are very intense they live in full time and us staff we're not just with them in the uh, lecture times we're with them all day um, waking them up or with them during their uh, quiet times and helping them we do counseling we go out with them in community work and ministry. Um, we work with them, we sweep, we clean, we whatever there is to do, we're with them. So it's not just training in the classroom, but it is uh, training them in and being with them in every area of their training, going out to the villages and uh, spending weekends out in these places. And so watching these young men and women develop and see God's call in their lives. And um, it's such an honour. I'm so proud of them. And, you know, you get to graduation day and you're exhausted, but it's been worth it. And this is the same not only in Papua New Guinea, but, you know, in India and the Philippines and other nations where we are involved. And so to, to see these young men and women in a training environment and to develop these gifts and callings and not only those five specific ministry gifts but other gifts you know they have wonderful um, gifts in working with children and working with young people and serving in preschools and um, they themselves becoming teachers in in bible schools becoming trainers um, looking after local churches it's such a wonderful thing to see these young people doing that for God in the nations. And so whether they've been, you know, whether God has gifted them with one of those five ministry gifts um, we've been looking at here or other gifts in relation to serving in ministry, um, it's, it's, it's an ongoing thing that needs to, is so important that we're looking out uh, for men and women and we can recognise, we learn how to recognise God's call on their life and encourage them to go for training. We've had quite a number of Australians that have been trained at Bethel in Papua New Guinea as well, um, and people that have come from the Philippines and other parts of the Pacific Islands and and Asia. And so that's been my experience and uh, and the privilege to be able to to live with these people, to work with these people and to see God 
outworking their lives. Um, and so that's equipping the body of Christ. Um, you know, I'm talking a lot about training here, but that's I'm just sharing from my own experience. And and then to be able to go and visit some of these local churches now that have been started by these young people in the nations and see these believers who are loving Jesus and growing in Christ and they are strong believers, they are solid believers and they love their leaders, they see the sacrifice of their leaders, but they themselves are growing in the Lord and are using the giftings within their own lives and being great stewards of the ministry um, that God has given them in whatever gift they have been given. And uh, and all this is what God or how God has uh, purposed the local church to be, that whether here in Australia or in the nations, that the body of Christ would um, continue to propagate, continue to, um, to build up, to encourage, to recognize, and to see these ministries outwork in our communities here within our own nation, which is so desperately needed, but at the same time in the nations as well. And to know and to be able to have the revelation of these scriptures, of this word in our own hearts, in our own lives, to know that God has given them to us to use to do something with so you know what am I going to do with my life um what will I do with the with the rest of my life I'm sort of been based here in Australia now for uh the last three years and um so things have changed but God's calling on my life has not changed and how that is outworked and expressed in my own life, whether it's being based here in Australia and then taking short-term uh, trips out to the nations or however I can do that, I continue to, to do that. And so we um, are excited to see that and be networking with so many different people. And I just appreciate part partnering together with you there in, in Morwell and the church in Terrelgan and and to see the young people uh, in your churches who love Jesus and are doing what they can do within their own life, um, within the gifts that God has given them, whether that's in the local church, in their own communities or in a wider sphere, it's being obedient to God and doing the best that we can with joy and obedience and the best stewardship that we can give, um, that we can see um, these uh, gifts being outworked in our lives, in the lives of others, and encouraging that and stirring that and um, supporting that. And so we'll be able to see um, the authority that we have been given to be able to go and share the word and to see people, see the oppressed set free, see the spiritually blind, see their eyes, their understanding being open to the message of the gospel, the poor in spirit, those who live in spiritual poverty, you know, who think they have everything, they think they're rich, they think they're fulfilled, but really they're bankrupt. And that's what all of us were at one time. We were absolutely completely bankrupt of any goodness um, and certainly our own goodness is is uh, filthy rags as the scripture says but when Christ came and made us justified us and gave us right standing with him he's made us new creations and given us wonderful gifts and talents to serve him so I just uh, encourage you with that word this morning and believe that you would take these scriptures, have a look at those scriptures that we've looked at that I've just shared with you and read through them. Read them slowly and prayerfully um, and read the words 
And I pray that the Holy Spirit would give you enlightenment and encouragement in your own life um, as they have done in my life. So thank you very much and uh, we'll see you again another time. Bless you all.